All right, let's try something new. Uh, have a lost PLA print or PLA print and a uh, mold lay print. And instead of using the regular block casting investment method, I'm actually going to try ceramic shell. Uh, what I've done is I've printed up some you know, sprue cups, and into the sprue cup, I'm going to screw in a big old hook so that I can hang these up after I dip them in the, uh, the investment slurry and let them drip for a while and then coat them with the refractory sand. I tried uh, earlier, I got the bright idea of taking just hot gluing on uh, some pink foam for a sprue. That worked for about two or three dips and it just you know the foam's not strong enough it just fell apart and so I came up with the idea that I print one of these up and I printed a nice little plastic hook to put in it to hang it I got about four coats of refractory on and then the hook broke so that piece I have sitting outside now tied together with wire and we're gonna try and pour it along with these see what happens that was a rough beginnings so hopefully doing it like this, you know, they won't break and they'll be easier to handle because you do need a, a good way to hold on to these things. This hot glue. We'll put old Jar Jar Brinks on there. Get a little stringy off. And then Mr. Groot. These poor guys have been sitting up on the back of the workbench probably for a year now and I haven't cast them. They're just for me, they're not for anybody. It's something I wanted to try. I see something already is that there's a slight bit of a gap. Is that camera? Uh, underneath the sprue base and the back of it's off the wax head in or something. <clears throat> And Jar Jar looks like he sat down pretty good. He's also got these big long floppy ears coming. Where is that camera? Ah. Got the big long floppy ears coming down here. And uh, I'm going to have to put a couple little vent wires on them so that they fill properly. I'll just use a little bit of wax wire. Double die. Too many cups of coffee this morning.
He looks pretty good as far as the joint on him, so we'll just leave that one alone. This one, on the other hand, has got a bit of a gap under it. We'll come in. Just put a little wax down in that gap. Alright, there they are. I'll just take the hook. Oh. Wife just came home. There's the hook. Here's something good to hold on to. You can hang it up. Okay, so we got them you know, sprued up and on a hook. Next thing is we're going to take and dip them in the uh, slurry, let them drip for a while until they quit dripping, and then we'll put a coat of refractory sand on top of it. Actually, I'm just using plain old silica sand because it's the best I have at the moment, but that should be good enough. Uh, doggies are all upset today. Yeah, let's just give this guy a quick dunk. ceiling here I can hook them to. And we just hook him up in the ceiling here. Let him drip. Do our Jar Jar Binks. Oh my, doggies are in rare form today. Yeah, that's enough dripping. Okay, so I've uh, rigged up a little sandbox here. Nothing fancy, just a battery box of all things. I must dang, still dripping. Yeah, I'm, uh, I do like the uh, the hook handle. That's going to work out good. So, let's get some sand on this guy. A 
Hopefully that'll help with some of the dripping. Looks pretty good. Get old Jar Jar Binks down here. I'd say one thing, the uh, mold lay, or lay mold, or whatever the heck it's called, looks like it takes the ceramic shell coating better than the PLA does. That'll be interesting to see how the two uh, compare against each other on the finish casting. Okay, got one coat on. We'll repeat this process about uh, probably nine times or so. Try and get a, a shell thickness of about three eighths of an inch. I'm new at this, so we'll, hopefully three eighths is enough. But we'll see. Get back to you. Okay, so I got them all shelled up, and that that hook worked out great. You can hold on to it real nice and it's strong, doesn't fall apart. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, I'm going to build some kind of a holding fixture so that when I put these in the kiln, I can just go in there and clip them, pull them up out of there, and then cast them. I'm going to go ahead and get the kiln fired up and heat it up. 1500 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Get these burned out and pour them in red brass. Sounds good. See ya. Okay, so I went ahead and let the shells cool off. And, uh, Doing a little inspection on the inside of them. And everything looks good. I don't see any uh, cracks or anything like that. So I think these are going to come out nice. To still see just a little bit of grit down in there. I'm going to have to blow them out with some air. Make sure I'm nice and clean. George or Binks, you remember I had the little vent wires, you can see where they're vented, so that'll help the ears fill nice and easy. It looks good inside, so I'm hoping that we get some really uh, nice looking castings out of this. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start dragging everything out. I'm going to go ahead and preheat these also this time. The aluminum I poured it cold and you get a much better surface finish out of aluminum at you know either a cold flask or very low temperature flask if you heat the flask up to say like 800 to 1000 degrees the surface finish really suffers with aluminum yeah uh, typically if you're pouring aluminum flask temp is between three and five hundred degrees uh, if you're casting parts that are thin and you need to hold the heat longer so that the area can fill uh, the part that I poured, you know, it's it was quite a large part. There's no real thin areas, so I just went ahead and poured it cold, and generally that gets you a better surface finish. 
these I don't see anything that there would be a problem uh, with them filling either so um, I'll probably take the flash temperature up to about four or five hundred degrees but no higher than that uh, I could probably actually even pour them cold if I wanted to because there's no real thin areas in them you know the thinner the cross section the higher the flash temperature you're going to want to have it just helps it feel better that's about all I got for you right now uh, looks like I gotta charge up the camera before the next round yep okay I'll be back You know, I'll be honest, uh, I don't like the way either one of those two pours looked. I'm trying out a, a new flux. Did you notice the pours look a little stringy? It's not really what I wanted to see. 
so we'll keep our fingers crossed that everything came out okay. That one's probably about ready for breakout. So. We'll see. Alright. I know this is still hotter than hell. The only thing that I see uh, looks pretty good, but the outer vent wire on this one ear didn't fill, neither did the outer vent wire on this ear, left just a little bit of uh, defects in there. Not bad. Finish looks pretty good on it. Finish chiseling them out of there and uh, get them cleaned up a bit. Yeah. They'll look okay sitting up on the mantle. No complaints. Next time uh, I'll definitely increase the, uh, the size of the vents coming off the ears. Yeah, when you do investment block casting and you use them vacuum, you don't generally have problems like that. So this is still just a little bit of a learning curve, but not too bad. Uh, will I dare crack that shell open yet? Imagine he's cooled off enough. This molten metal won't come out. Bam! A good fill on the shoulders. What's the problem? What's the problem? Hi. I'm videotaping. Let that one cool a bit more, come back to it. Looks like a uh, old group came out pretty good. I gotta let them cool off some more and get them all cleaned up here, but we'll let these guys just sit for a bit and I'll get back with you. Well, old Jar Jar doesn't have the, uh, the surface finish I was looking for. And I kind of knew that when I poured them. Uh, when I watched the metal flow, I could see that, you know, there was a lot of stuff going into the mold that shouldn't have been. 
probably should have had the flask temperature higher and as well as the melt temperature higher and spent more time actually uh, cleaning the melt uh, getting all the flux off the top the other thing is the uh, bottom of the ear down here the vent wire didn't fill and you can see big inclusion down at the bottom of the ear so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with him just yet uh, he may wind up going back in the pot or I could spend some time repairing him but oh Mr. Groot though I, uh, this is in red brass and I heated it up a lot more before the pour that's got a good surface finish to it you know no inclusions or anything uh, the melt was a lot cleaner too when I was skimming it so so I'm pretty happy with Mr. Groot and that's gonna look good once I get him all polished up uh, I'll probably do a separate video you know showing the, the polishing and everything a couple people had asked about it right now they just gone through the blast cabinet real quick to get most of the oxides off and fire scale and from here I'll take and start cleaning them up and detailing and I'll get back and show you what he looks like when he's all done see you bye